so excited about Rockford just having like, such an incredible art community. Yeah. As well yeah. as, I mean, like, just there's something for everyone here. Definitely. So what would be, like, your influences then? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough question. Sure there's many. So growing up, you know, uh, in grade school, I would go to after school care all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. And when my dad would pick me up from after school care, he would be listening to things in the car like Sticks and mm-hmm. Rush. Hell yeah. Uh, I just and, saw Sticks uh, a couple weeks ago. It was awesome. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Fucking, um, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, Joe Satriani, uh, oh, Edgar Joe, Winter, God, you know, all this shit. Classics. Then when my mother would pick me up, she'd be listening to things like Gladys Knight and the Pips, Barbra Streisand, Celine Dion, uh, Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Ray Charles. Our parents awesome. sound you know, very similar. What a great <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I really, I really dove deep into the the funk and the the soul, the R and B, the Stevie Wonder and the Ray oh, Charles. Yeah. That shit sucked me in. It's got a feel to it. I think like a lot of like like funk is starting to have kind of a renaissance because it really yeah, kind of it's it really got that is. that groove to it that a lot of music kind of lost for a while. I think it's, it's so much better oh, than great. like yeah the pop that was coming out in the last like, right yeah. 10 years. I like this like the, this new funky yeah, like yeah. trend has been going on. I'm really enjoying that. Definitely, and you know like I'm grateful for the influence I have. You know, um, yeah. And the fact that I just, I really enjoy music for the sake of music and it means a lot to me, you know, music really moves me. So yeah. uh, I like being able to just find all different kinds of music that I enjoy. Dude, sweet. Ladies, 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 cats and squirrels. Bunch of hookers and cocaine. Uh, got all kind of shit. Allegedly. I'm not a professional. Drugs. Yes. Drugs. Yes. There is the five. Got a little bit of money, so the Lord did me good. <laughs> Cancelled. Malort. I'm back in number two. Internet gone mad. Hello. My name is Kevin Matra. Welcome to Screw City Podcast. I'm here with Alex and Alex, Ian, and Andrew. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, they we're happy to have you. Nice. What's up, everybody? Shibby. Yeah, yeah like, it's a I little can, weird. But I know. <laughs> Shibby's cool. We got nicknames. It's I, I, from I, I, uh, Dude, Where's My Car. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. I've, I've played rugby for six years, so a weird nickname is not foreign to me. Right. right. What was your nickname? Uh, El Hombre de Musica. Ooh, the music <laughs> man. <laughs> nice. yeah. I'm for it. I'll support that. So, Kevin, go. what do you do? Yeah, right now I just uh, I go to school at Rasmussen University, study surgical technology, and yeah. um, make music in my free time. You know, uh, the older I get, the easier it is to please me. I have a lot of interests. Like I was just today, I was uh, biking with my friend who did some frisbee golf. Fun. Uh, yeah, nice. I like simple shit. I like to exercise and just uh, sit around the fire with some friends and, and just relax. You know. I'd, I think people need a lot to entertain themselves lately, but now I'm just like, right. it doesn't take much to entertain me. I like, I like a sim- simplistic yeah, yeah. things and people that have uh, shared values, I think is important. Hell yeah. Dude. Yeah, so, just simple good hangs. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Wait, so you're studying to be a technologist, surgical Surgical technology. technology. Yeah, so people... That's the, the, it, you're the second one. I know, I was going to say right yeah, the second we one. We well, buddy Zach, who is one currently, and then you're learning to become one. Yep. Well, it sounds counterintuitive because, you know, uh, I'm a musician and music is my passion. Right. But... um. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't have the gonads uh, to just <laughs> go for the just the risk. You know, I love the idea of taking a risk. It's thrilling. Yeah. You know, but, but it's also you got to have that. It's you yeah, have something. And I mean, if yeah. you're as talented as, you know, you got to keep to the be able on. to do that, you know, with the surgical thing. I mean, obviously, right. why wouldn't you go for it? Well, and I feel good. I, I would love to take that risk because I have I'm very talented and my band is finally starting to record demos so we can uh, hop in the studio. And record we really enjoy the stuff album. that we listen to. It, oh, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Dude. And the shit you guys haven't heard is, is fucking amazing. Like, truly, the Johns are incredibly talented. You know, like, and they are just true, truly wonderful musicians. Like, I love that you just call them the Johns. That's the Johns, <laughs> yeah. Both his guitar players. They're amazing. John Scott Daly and uh, John, John Sanders, they're, they're truly awesome. And they have just uh, wonderful talent. They are truly, truly wonderful musicians. And to be able to play with them is wonderful. So I, I can't wait to, to for people to hear, like, Not demos. Mean, like, I'm it's, really it's going to sound very, very broadcast ready and super crisp. Like, I write all the music, all the lyrics and everything, too. So I feel really proud of that. that Just a little bit that I've heard. I'm really yeah. excited to hear. Yeah, no, I'm excited. For so what's the, the name of it coming under? Flourish. Flourish? All right, awesome, Flourish. awesome. Well, nice. So definitely we'll plug all it, that it and feel, everything. It feels good, but I feel like I haven't given it time to really set in yet just because there's been such a gap because of covid you know, oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so I don't feel like flourish. Like, does it feel like me? Does it feel like music? I just, but it's also like, who gives a fuck about a name? Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it feels good. That's awesome. That's really exciting. How long have you been working on it then, this project? This project has been um, accumulative. You know, I just I write music. Yeah. Just uh, throughout my days and 
uh, I think we have about seven originals. Um, but we just started working on recording demos. So I have a nice setup in my basement. You know, bought a brand new uh, Neiman one, TLM 102, and I got a nice universal audio, oh, nice. the Apollo Twin. So we're recording demos to make it really seamless when we hop in the studio. That's so awesome. it's going to take a while, but I'm not trying to rush it. I'm fucking 26. Yeah, yeah, there's you no know, rush. Yeah. People, so are you guys going yeah, for like right. an EP or are you going to go for like a full length, keep writing more songs, or what's the goal? So, you know, the music I have currently uh, that I wrote for the band is... Um, a uh, little bit of like uh, R&B seasoned. Uh, some mm -hmm. of it's a little more like indie alternative, like uh, kind of like a um, uh, fucking, uh, what's that What's that fucking band? I made Bedroom Talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess Can't kind of, the name of them. yeah, kind of like, uh, oh, the starting line. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Starting oh, line, right, kind of like right, say right. anything, little indie alternative, kind of like local natives, say anything, era of stuff. Yeah, And great, then some great. of it's kind a little more music. just like yeah. really easy listening, like up-tempo shit. So we're, maybe we'll drop two EPs, one that's a little more like R&B, neo-soul, feeling other one that's a little more like eclectic like uh indie alternative stuff oh it's a really nice mix awesome. yeah. I'm, really, yeah, awesome. I'm so excited about rockford just having such an incredible art community yeah as well yeah. as i mean like just there's something for everyone here definitely so what would be like your influences then oh man <laughs> yeah that's a rough question sure there's many so growing up you know uh in grade school i would go to after school care all the yeah. time mm -hmm. and when my dad would pick me up from after school care he would be listening to things in the car like Sticks and mm -hmm. Rush. Hell yeah. Uh, I just and, saw uh, Sticks a couple weeks ago. It was awesome. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Fucking, um, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, Joe Satriani, uh, oh, Edgar oh, Winter, God, you know, all this shit. Classics. Then when my mother would pick me up, she'd be listening to things like Gladys Knight and the Pips, Barbara Streisand, Celine Dion, uh, Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Ray Charles. Our parents awesome. sound you know, very similar. What a great mix. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I really I really dove deep into the the funk and the, the soul, the R&B, the Stevie Wonder and the Ray oh, Charles. Yeah. That shit sucked me in. It's got a feel to it. I think like a lot of like, like funk is starting to have kind of a renaissance because it really yeah, kind of, it's it got really that, that groove to it that a lot of music kind of lost for a while, I think. It's, it's so much better oh, than great. like, yeah, the pop that was coming out in the last like, right, yeah. 10 years. Right, yeah. I like this like, it. this new funky yeah, like yeah. trend has been going on. I'm really enjoying that. Definitely. And you know, like I'm grateful for the influence I have. You know, um, yeah. And the fact that I just, I really enjoy music for the sake of music and it means a lot to me, you know, music really moves me. So yeah. uh, I like being able to just find all different kinds of music that I enjoy. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know? I've always said like, I have, you know, several things that I'm good at, several things that I'm passionate about, but the only one that ever gives me goosebumps is mm -hmm. hearing a good song yeah. at the right time. Yeah. yeah. You have to be, able to, I think relating to it is a wonderful thing. And before I forget my, probably my biggest uh, influence is Mac Miller. Rest oh yeah. The yeah. Dude, rest yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. Awesome. I, I got, say, his, I got some lyrics of his tattooed on my chest. Mac yeah. ruled, dude. He was so good. Like it was he, just, to throw it on he was so intelligent. Yeah. He was, awesome. he was so smart. And he, everything he made was gold. Yeah. Yeah. Genre Ben too and just yeah. really great yeah and all, all, all the way around dude i love his yeah, uh the live version of uh what is it what's it called objects in the rear view right yeah. uh, objects oh, yeah. in the mirror objects in the mirror there you go dude i love that that's a good one that's so good the live from space yeah that, yeah. that was that. good um you know mac miller i think was just um <clears throat> so obviously himself like you you look at him and you see like his interviews like yeah. he is so human to the point where it just makes you feel like you're friends with him mm -hmm. right you know mm -hmm. and i grew up with him because like i throughout high school like he co he comes up with all this music and i'm listening to him as like i go about my days like and i have all these memories of <laughs> well specific moments in time where i'd be listening to mac miller with my friends right whether it be like an earlier body of work or, or <laughs> newer stuff yeah i think everybody from our generation has at least some of that i mean i had a right. roommate that was really into it and it's what got me into it and yeah i have a lot of like great memories of some of the best times of my life are kind of backdropped by a mac miller song yeah and that's that's fucking a beautiful it gave me goosebumps just hearing that you know it's, right. it's special that's also a wonderful thing about music it's like the purest form of escapism and it oftentimes yeah, it really brings is. you nostalgia as well yeah, the they, claim that, they claim that smell is the one that can take you back but honestly dude a no, good song okay. is the one that pulls me yeah, right back to wherever yeah. I songs too but i will say smell really it does. Is yeah, it's it's good. huge trigger for me it's fascinating to see where things take me and especially when it comes to music like i, I find it beautiful within myself to like be able to pardon me <clears throat> you're fine when I like listen to a song, like I instantly get like emotions and it instantly takes me somewhere. Right. Yep. You know, and um, people always ask me like how I go about writing a song or what I feel like. And oftentimes it's me just playing chords and me going like, bah, isn't that, bah, isn't that? yeah, then just same, random and the same word. And I'll like babble, yes, then a yes, word will come out yes. and then I'll just, you know, it kind of, kind of comes naturally for me unless I have an idea beforehand. Well, it gives you a feel for the cadence without, without the burden of trying to come up with, you know, some cohesive lyric. It gives you an idea of the cadence and the kind of like, you know, how you want to take this. And right. I think that's a good yeah. way to do it. Especially I've never heard somebody do it like that. That's an interesting way to cadence. do it. I exactly. do it the same way. I write songs that I'll probably never use, but I always right. write songs all the time in my free time, like hundreds of my fucking phone. And that's the same way I do. Like, you know, I just always just, 
like hum a melody or something right. like gibberish and then put some words to it and all of a sudden it starts flowing that way and it's yeah, a great it's way to do it when you so, tapped in i have like a weird thing where like i'll listen to like certain songs and i'll find like just like obviously like already made popular songs <laughs> mm-hmm. and whatnot and i'll just get like the audio only version and i'll write like depending on my mood I'll write lyrics that match that song and that style. And I'm just like, oh, cool. That was cool. And I'll just sit there and look at it. It's like, I'm not going to. His gonna, lyrics I, are always just, I am Alex. I am sad. <laughs> First off, wrong. Secondly, wrong. also kind of. Sad music is some of the best shit, too. Though, it really you know, is. Like, that's, yeah. fucking, that's, well, but it's the strongest yeah. emotion. I mean, I think you're feeling like you're feeling you're. You know, if I think sadness really is one of those ones that like carries with you, and it's the strongest one that you feel because anger certainly, but it's hard to write a song about being angry. Definitely, and it comes out in different ways for everybody. True, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's really cool like listening to uh, sad song you relate to. Like, I think people oftentimes nowadays in this generation always go to Frank Ocean's Blonde because yeah. like yeah. there is a lot of like very sentimental sounding s- sounds in there, like whether it be like a keyboard or a synthesizer or like an uh, like an atmospheric. Mm-hmm. you know pad or something yeah it was and very it interesting really, produced man very well produced definitely but yeah i went through some big big breakup and i was just like blonde like Dude, yeah, yeah, on yeah, repeat. Yeah, yeah. i think everybody's had All that where you have like a, a yeah, really but you want to, you want to wallow in your sorrow though you, you know do. but yeah. it's, it's yeah. strange because like you're experiencing this moment of sadness but or this period of sadness rather but you want so badly to like feel it Right, you you know, you, so I, like you yeah. just listen to it, and you're just like, yes, I'm sad, so I would like to wallow in my sad. I do. I I think everybody's had that. You get some giant, you know, life event, and you go into a song, and like you start listening to the lyrics a lot closer when you're in that mm-hmm. in that state. When you're mm-hmm. not, when they say when you're happy, you listen to the melody. When you're sad, you listen to the lyrics. And I think oh, that rings true for a lot of people. Damn, I mean, that's why it's I always listen me. to the lyrics. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's literally Damn me. It. Like anytime, no. like a big, just like emotional thing happens in my life i'm Thanks, like i'm gonna me i'm gonna listen to listener it's gone oh, <laughs> wow there's five of us so damn yeah, we're I, out of I, champagne boy. I, I put on listener and then i just like listen to lyrics i'm like all right cool well i needed to cry and i'm gonna have it now <laughs> i think a big part of music too though is like lyrics lyrics are very touching yeah. and like very very important but i think like the more like you sit and like actually like listen to music the music itself can make you feel very touched like yeah, yeah you know absolutely. i'll be sitting you know like just uh maybe like seven, eight months ago, or actually uh, rather pre COVID, you know, like my friend, John Scott Daly came over and we were playing music and, uh, you know, we got high of course. And that makes feelings so much more oh, yeah. 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 accentuated. But like I was sitting and like listening to things he was playing was just making me cry. Like, yeah. And like, there's nothing wrong with that either. Like, you know, well, I can, it's, that's, and it's just it's so interesting to to that, experience like, that. A, a, a string of notes. I mean, these are just notes that, you know, everyone's ever, everyone's played. We know exactly where they are, but stringing them together, like a major chord can really make you feel very kind of happy, open, but a minor chord can kind of instill that little bit of like kind of fear and whatever else. And these things are, it's so simple. And like classical music, these, they told entire stories with no words. Yeah, They're just strings crazy. and that's it. Right. Well, in opposition to that too, though, I think like people don't realize that like minor chords aren't always sad, you know, not always because like when you, when you yeah. think of like, a, like Neo soul, but like, yeah, generally like that, that's like, like a basic, that's a fundamental idea of music, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, major chords are happy and minor chords are sad. Yeah. Like, when you listen to these like major seven or like minor seven chords, they're like super pretty, you know? And like, um, they can also have a lot of like power to them. They can be like more like encouraging rather. Max, which I think is really important please. too. Everybody wants- <laughs> I was going to say, we're all topping off our drinks. My yeah, trash so drinks. I'm still good. I'm a mimosa though. Okay, I'm still, I'm still nursing that. But no, yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know, man. Like I said, there's, there's so many things where I can like literally just go back. I love saving all of my playlists and just like one day just being like, you know what? No, we're going back to like 2007 and we're just going to see what <laughs> I was castle. feeling then and just go right back to when I was. And I'm right oh, yeah. back in the seat. Dude. Well, yep. that, that was yeah. literally like us, like on our way here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were yeah. And then same with snap. like yesterday when we were leaving, uh, Baker Street. Yeah, but and we were just like, you know what? It's like on our leaving Baker Street yesterday. We're just like Hootie and the Blowfish and Blues Traveler. Nice. That's the whole it. way. Wow. The and whole we just way. Fucking That's good jammed shit. That. That's and, good shit. And then today it was just nineties. Just doesn't matter. Just Natalie and Bradley on as loud as it would go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nothing's uh, wrong. I'm torn. <laughs> no, music is definitely it's it's incredible. Like as long as we've been making it, we've been making music for thousands of years at this point, about a thousand years yeah, yeah. at this point. And we haven't figured everything out yet. I mean, there's still so it's there's only so many notes, and you can still come up with the ways of putting them together and layering, and it can be completely different than anything anyone's ever heard ever. That's it's awesome. It's dude. insane it. to think about. It feels endless, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And like, what's special is that, like, you know, you can really put like your personality and music 
The hardest thing though is like uh, just being a creative in general. You're your own worst enemy, so you're right. constantly like um, and worst second guessing yourself too. And yeah. Definitely, you're constantly comparing yourself to others, and you're worried about other, what other people think about you. But you have to realize that like the most wonderful thing about making music is that nobody else is like making what you're making. Mm -hmm. And I think my my main goal is to be able to like have people feel like they can relate to me because I so desperately like love or relating to other musicians. Yeah. I and, really um, agree with you know, that. like I want people to feel like recognized and noticed. I'm, you know, it, it's so special to me that people can feel like seen or heard or like be, be able to even like say like, Hey, like I, when you said about that, you know, I don't, I don't want it for uh, the, the ego boost. I, I would yeah. rather, I, I get joy out of connecting to other people. Certainly. And like, it's nice to be able to, to like connect with somebody who like really enjoys a similar interest or like can relate to a song that you make. I think it's super special. It makes me feel very, very oh, happy. Yeah. And I think so you're lucky. Someone... We're lucky to be in Rockford where we have such a, like a rich art community, oh, yeah. you know, super just you know, all creatives and stuff. We have so many here and musicians and things, and there's something for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We got very lucky. We're a very lucky. Team. We have a lot of really good mixed genre of everything. Like if any night, on the weekend, you can sit there and be like, I just want to go see a show. I want to go see this kind of show. And you can literally just look it up and be like, all right, cool. Well, I'm going Somebody's to playing somewhere. I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to go to this bar. I'm going to go to this venue. Like it, oh, you yeah. can, you can yeah. find, we're such a super artistic place. Like you said, yeah. that is just, it's because we're really depressing here. Well, and like, that's what it is. Everyone's, well, it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's very sad, so we make that good music. I would say it's more or less the fact of, you know, we have the rap of like everybody is like, oh, yeah, fuck Rockford. Everybody hates Rockford. But you know what we do? We make we make the most of it. it. We make the most of our suck. We There's make, a lot of people that have like bad, you know, bad upbringings and things like that. And these are the people that can generally make some of the best, you know, not as a rule, but in general, they tend to, you know, take that and use it. Yeah, as your you have you have experience. Your music. So yeah. as a result of Definitely. living in a town that kind of, you know, it challenges you sometimes. Certainly Rockford will challenge you. And I think that kind of makes us stronger. And certainly you can put that into your art. If you want to get write a good song, go through a breakup. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, can, you can have that anyway. You can have a breakup. You're anyway. going to write a, write a good song. Or hit a pothole and just be like, Rose, suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, if you're hitting a pothole, you're definitely writing like a death core, like Dead Awake song. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you're going to be think, screaming at everyone for the next hour and a half straight. I think people have a right to like, you know, sometimes say like, uh, rather share their opinion about like how much they dislike Rockford or like things, things yeah. specific things well, they yeah, dislike Rockford, about Rockford. Yeah, has its problems. It's the same, oh, in the same way that you share like an opinion about your family. Maybe you don't like everyone in your family all the time, but you still love them. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I think like what's more is that like, the like, you know, the people that, um, perhaps it's so difficult for me to talk about others because like, I don't right. ever want to sound like I think I know better because I don't, and I don't know what's good for anybody Agreed. else. I only know right. what's good for me. Yeah, right? you don't know their experience. But, yeah. but like, I, I always, I always want to give people as much kindness as possible and try to relate to them. You know, like I was just talking about. So like when I say things, like I try not to say it from, um, a perspective of like judgment, because when I say like, Hey, if you don't like Rockford, maybe like you should stop doing the same exact thing all the time. Certainly. But yeah. it's easy for me to say, right? Because yeah. I don't know what that person's life is like. Right. So that's the con constant, it strikes the balance. That's the constant struggle I have with trying to like talk about like people having problems with Rockford or if like they actually have the, so if they actually have the power to change what they're doing and like appreciate Rockford in a different way, you know, or maybe it's their friend group even, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they need to find some friends and they that's have to get thing. outside of that. They have to, you have to escape that, that shell that's like, hiding your individuality i find that i mean and it's not a rockford thing it's just a, <clears throat> a general thing but i lived a very interesting life it, you know sometimes very hard for a decade it was a really hard thing but i think i've taken that and what i try to do now is i don't try to judge anyone or say anything i try to do what i would have wanted what i thought would have helped me in that time mm -hmm. and that's basically what we try and you know provide and i think rockford again as it is really was a, a backdrop for all of that because it like i said it will challenge you this place can allow you to oh, do yeah. a lot of things and if you're in a bad spot it'll It'll enable you in certain ways, but definitely, I've learned a lot from it. Just try to stay on the east side, and you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that. I've learned I, that. I disagree. Downtown rules. But <laughs> I mean, okay, downtown is like the one bubble that's okay. See, but I, I was mean, gonna. I mean, like, well, I lived on School and Central, and honestly, like I said, I've learned I a lot bridge. from. I lived. It's I learned a, a lot from I, living I over there right too. Off. I think it gave me a lot more culture. I, I enjoyed the the time I spent there. People say all these things about whatever, but I spent a lot of time in my front yard just enjoying the neighborhood and talking to my neighbors. And like, I felt a bigger sense of community living in school and central than I do where I live now. 
and you got like, lucky. You, you kind of think about it. Say. You kind of think about it this way, where it's like you know, like you get all those people who want to be like super negative about it and be like, oh, you know, this place sucks. It's what you make but, it. See, but yeah. like, what have we done the last like four or five weekends in a row now? Enjoy the local. We thing. literally are just like, all right, where's a local spot we can go hang out at and yeah. get and lunch? We've had an incredible and couple of weeks. We've it's, just it's an awesome thing gone to places we've never been to before, or. Or it's been some a long time. or someplace I've never been to. You're like, oh, this place is like awesome. Like Baker Street yesterday. Yeah, you're like, awesome. Baker Street's great. And I was like, I haven't been there yet. And then we had a fantastic day. They had uh, Dirty Dancing on DVD up it on the TV. Awesome. So that, that was great. <laughs> and then yeah. and then as we were leaving, we were watching Tommy Boy. And I was like, I almost kind of want to so say just to shout watch out Tommy Baker Boy. Street. If you're in the Rockford <laughs> area, please go visit them. They're awesome. Great burgers. They had a Mitch Hedberg joke as, as a one of the descriptions. For that me. was what <laughs> I had <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it was awesome. Um. So speaking of local stuff, you said you have became vegetarian recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just a local thing. Rockford yeah, yeah. is the only vegetarian. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say that because I was going to bring it. Yeah. 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 For about four months now, I've been like uh, eating vegetarian. Um, I try to uh, stray away from dairy as much as possible. But the most dairy I have is uh, I work at Joseph's Steakhouse and Oyster Bar. Oh, I serve. Wow. So, I love Joseph. So Mikey, uh, one of the chefs there, he makes the fucking best Parmesan risotto. Oh. It is out of this world, oh. truly. So, um, we'll, so I like I like we'll some cheese there. and I uh, I try to avoid you know cow's milk and shit like that. For sure. Mm-hmm. But um, being vegetarian has like cow milk. increased me increased my energy levels, even like my testosterone levels, which sounds crazy because I'm 26. So I'm already overflowing with testosterone as it is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it helps me balance my hormones just look a at lot. the beard. I was going to say, look at that. No, the mustache. <laughs> the mustache. Yeah. Yeah. The mustache Make sure rules. I keep touching it. Thank you. Um, and it feels good. I love fruits and vegetables too. I'm so lucky because I am probably the least picky person. Least picky oh person yeah. Person. So yeah, and picky it, it's awesome. Vegan. You know, um, and it's, it's a little, it's a little bit more work too, you know, cause back when I was like the leanest I've ever been, like I was 180 pounds and like, I was just eating for every meal, like chicken, brown mm-hmm. rice and Brussels sprouts, you know, and I was getting fucking shredded and right. feeling good, but I feel much more healthy with that extra 20 pounds on me. And I feel much healthier rather with that extra 20 pounds and, mm-hmm. um, just having more nutrients flowing through my body. So like eat lots of like beans and nuts and, uh, different complex carbohydrates and um, it's awesome. I think it's a fun, uh, like almost a challenge. I, I enjoy like kind of a putting a limitation on something. Like so, for example, uh, I'm I'm a car stereo guy. I know it's I'll tie it back. I promise. But uh, <laughs> I've had a couple of cars where like the last one was like, all right, we're doing all out, whatever else, no holds barred. But this car that I have, I wanted to make it as impressive as I could. But within the constraints of it, has to look stock. And uh, we're coming back to diet. Um, and that, <laughs> I, I, win. <laughs> I also enjoy, I did that with like the keto and stuff like that, but like I found creative ways to, I like having a limitation because it makes you get creative with what you're going to do, like eating and stuff like that. Like I would eat, for example, when I was on keto, which this was a while ago, but I would eat uh, hot dogs with just mustard, but no bun. And honestly, it's a lot better than you'd think. And like, as lately I've been into like Caesar salads and things like that. I know there's fish in it, but it's, nice. you know, it's super good. And like, I like a challenge. I like to put a limitation on myself to make me kind of think instead of just going, Oh, I'm just going to grab this. You have to go not that because of this and like, whatever it makes even eating kind of more of an engaging experience. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel you. like I try to Why like the bring up cars about that. <laughs> <laughs> about like I said, it's just, it's, it's my own mind. I, I, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a little, like putting a li- like my, my mind works in a very unique for way. Putting a limit on things. Like I, like, to a sense, like try to like limit my like red meat intake. So like, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you it's go. a once in a while thing, but like, yeah, like you try to limit it. I live, yeah, I live primarily on a grain diet. So <laughs> it's like, mostly oh, beer. Go. Liquid it's diet. Just beer. It's that most, grain belt, baby. We yeah. diet. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm always fat. It's because I like beer a lot. Well, hard not to. <laughs> PBR is uh, delicious. <laughs> PBR is good. Beer is good. I mean, like people, people shouldn't feel bad about what they eat. You know, sure. I think that's a big problem because people don't realize how much of a connection there is between your stomach and your mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fuel, man. You oh, know, yeah. it, you and know, your f- gut biome. Yeah, lot. definitely. And your food is fuel. People should be able to feel happy about what they eat. You know, I don't want to feel ashamed if I want to have um, like a chocolate chip cookie or something. Right, like, exactly, you know? yeah. But Fatty. like, you know, of course it goes into all the <laughs> yeah, Right, exactly. The body standards and bullshit like that. But I mean, like, you know, if you, if you can feel good and like live your life happily, just a- including like what you eat, I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, true, I mean, yeah. it's also a personal choice. People, I, I don't want people to feel ashamed for what they eat either. Uh, well, I mean, rather 
Don't eat people though. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do you, you, eat you, eat people? Well, yeah, people, yeah. people taste the like thing. pork. Right. Well, people should How do you eat know? the same for eating meat specifically. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, you know, this gentleman I work with, uh, Josephs, he eats plant based like throughout the week, but then on the weekend he eats meat if he wants to. Sure. Okay. You know. And I think that's good. It, that's a better system. I could. You, you can share your experience with how what the the good experience you've had with it. You can share with people and say, hey, this is what it's done for me, and I think it's a great thing. Right. And then that's allow right. people to choose it as yeah. opposed to a yeah. I I really respect. Yeah, that. definitely. I respect that encourage a lot. like being healthy too. But I think it's you know it's, it's not very gonna shame someone for not doing. And it. also, I mean, working Except at Joseph's, Max, you are Max. you are so you are so like, I love that place. <laughs> it's oh, awesome. Yeah. You got some very interesting people. Like the chefs there are bananas dude <laughs> oh yeah joseph's joseph's is a really awesome restaurant like uh the people that come in are really pleasant the food is truly amazing the kitchen staff loves what they do are we talking about the one off of uh spring creek yes, yes. okay just uh, want to make sure it's I, incredible I'm it's wonderful i'll take it think about i promise it. a good <laughs> place to be you know we can cater private events and things like that it's awesome but nice. like really the food is is wonderful we have vegan and vegetarian options as well like you know just yesterday that, I had, that's I had a, a big kicker in a lot of restaurants I'm like, it's it's really you right always now. have to have <laughs> Have vegetarian and specifically vegan options. Yeah, you have to creating that inclusive. If you you, you can't yeah. just you can't just do vegetarian options. You have to also have vegan because it's two different things. Still, yeah. yeah. A lot of places don't realize that they're like, oh, it's vegetarian. It's like, well, it's, not <laughs> it's, vegan. it's still got cheese on it. So. Right, and we even have things you can eat. Like the kitchen can whip up basically like whatever you need. Like I had somebody come in. And it's like, hey, like. I can't have dairy or gluten. So yeah. like the kitchen was able to whip up a that. piece of salmon with like, like some said, green you guys, vegetables. Like you guys have awesome. some of the most talented chefs in Rockford. I, I truly believe that. Yeah, they're awesome. And um, yeah, serve, serving there is just a great time. You know, like I, I love it. It's fun. It's my first serving job as well. I've never served before this. So it's strange that I work at a fine dining restaurant. Isn't it weird? I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't work in that sector now. I work in like a kind of a, you know, I'm just in a shop all day. I think there's like nine employees, but the best job I ever had was working with the people. I, I enjoy being around and seeing the, like the different fare that, you know, people come in and whatever. It really gives you a, a chance to see what everybody is, you know, well, and so like, that and all you the, as a sushi, a sushi yeah, chef? Yeah, I was a sushi <laughs> chef for a year. There you go. Yeah, you really a very, were? Yeah, just picture was, Max yeah, in a, a kimono with the you. headband on. Like, he's actually dude, literally going to teach somehow me. Somehow I could see him doing that. I'm yeah, pretty good at it. He's it literally going to teach me how to make. I kind of, I kind of like. I, I failed. I failed before. up and just ended up in a sushi chef position. I and failed up. It. Uh, I did really good at it. I mean, it was one of those things that I just kind of like. I I excelled at, and I don't know why, but I'm really glad I did. Hey man, I was a cook at Pig Minds for two and a half years. But it was fun. Like I said, it was so cool to get to see all the different people. I miss working around. The general public being in a shop now is kind of I a don't. bummer. You really you know, want me the general public dude. deliver pizzas for a while, <laughs> oh, Max? I promise you, you don't miss it. You, you, it's an illusion. You That's think true. Rose colored glasses. Yeah. I'm sure. you mi- yes, exactly. A weekend, you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Again? I do not want to deal with these people. It makes you realize how important like human interaction is. Oh yeah, you know? for sure. Well, and I think I love it's it. practice. I, I think it's that, practice yeah. for engaging with people. It gives you like for someone like me, I had a lot of like social problems when I was younger. I was never really good socially and I had to like, you know, I had, I was like, lucky I had a, a brother and stuff like that. Internet. That's perfect. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> but I think that working, we're talking, we're working talking to hundreds of people all the time. We had literally just, tens. You know, it's, <laughs> 200. Yeah. it's like 200. But working with people, I think really gave me a chance to interact. Cause I mean, I'm out there on the floor. I'm up. I'm, I'm the first person you see when you walk in. So I got a chance to interact with a lot of people. Hmm. And I think that genuinely helped me. Yeah. I mean, it was, it throws you to the wolves for lack of a better term, you know, and you kind of get to experience, like talk to people and hear their story when they're standing in line waiting. And it's, it's nice. I like it. And you got to learn how to like, uh, react quickly. Yes. To as well. Yeah. Everything, especially Instead like, of just standing there like, blank I've face, worked like, at uh, 11th street, you know? So uh, no, yeah. not, I, I didn't actually work 11th street. Right. Yeah. Well, I uh, wouldn't surprise sure. you. Where's the hookers and cocaine <laughs> button, Max? <laughs> but, the hookers and cocaine button. But, uh, no. So I worked at a restaurant off 11th street. So, you know, you got to see, the, the uh, best of a rock, a rock rock best. Shop yeah, with rock rock best. Cocaine. Cocaine. convicted pedophile as their former mascot. <laughs> yeah, um, that's where he used to work. Dude, okay, I used to work there when that happened. The Oof. day of. Speaking of, so I remember I come what? into work at like eight a.m. and they're like, "Well, this is pictures news. of Jared." Took down the pictures of Jared, and they're fucking oh, covered yeah. in the subway. The fucking oh, thing. No. Day of, like they sent a whole email to every restaurant. Burn it! Burn Gone. it all! <laughs> Gone! <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then I remember I should have taken the fucking. Jared Fogel fucking like sticker to put on a window that would be pretty funny in <laughs> hindsight <laughs> but you're, Maybe horrible, not. Dude. Maybe you're not. on your own no, speaking of which you don't think it'd be funny to have just a Jared Fogel thing just randomly be like oh look I got this while I, while I will admit I don't know the whole there's, story I will there's say a I, no, sucks, there's a lot of kitty porn there's a lot of kitty porn not what I was getting that's, at I was okay. saying I, I don't know the whole yeah, story not that's not what I was getting at <laughs> I don't know the whole story but I was going to commend the uh, girl who defended herself at the subway on East State Street when it got by gunpoint which also went that's what I was getting to you shithead yeah, nice. that went Scary viral. Shit. 
Yeah. It was it was very impressive. I mean, like literally, she took a gun from Have someone. You seen I mean, pistol whipped him with pistol how, whipped Did you him. see it, Kevin? What's up? Did you see that video? No. I, I guess find I'll just, it. I'll try and try find it. You know what's really fast. funny? People at work gonna, were asking I, I, me on the po- sure about the podcast, it. and they were like, are you going to react to that? Are you going to react to that? I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of been if done If we already. feel like <laughs> and it, that's all we have to do. Unintentionally. So, yeah, I guess we are. Tap, tap. It was in Rockford? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was uh, on East State. Oh, okay. It was, so It's the one over there by uh, the Yeah, and unfortunately, she actually got suspended oh, because the, the video mm-hmm. got leaked right and we speeds. don't know who released it, but she got suspended and the boss said that she can't come back to work until she scrubs it from the internet. So the big fun? bummer on that. There's a GoFundMe for her if you guys she can track lit- that down. The only thing wow. that was stolen was her personal <clears throat> items and yeah. she defended herself. Okay, yeah, I, agree. I missed that this was actually in Rockford. This is, yeah, yeah, this was bad. on State, dude. My fault. Oh, wow. She's getting ready to... Yeah, oh, I'm wow. him. trying to find the video. To go we'll the back. The video. Apparently, there's something for me there to go back there. We'll just play it. Yeah, I think this is the video. I guess we have to watch this. It was this on TMZ. Uh, this week in Rockford. And tried to rob me. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, I don't know what he thought he was going to get out of the back. Well, I think that she just thought he was like, oh, shit. Subways have like three hundred dollars in the register. Do not rob, rob a subway. Yeah, it's, You're it's not a, gonna get money. Well, he did, he what do you mean you had a Monterey cheddar bread? <laughs> he didn't get anything besides her personal purse. Well, that means she defended like, herself. I have to give her com- credits for that, dude. She, she legit defended yeah, herself. So yeah, he's trying to take and her she purse. Him. She pissed him. just shoot him. This is how strong Rockford is, man. I mean, someone comes in and tries to rob you, and you just take his gun and hit him with it. You're just not scared of you. Not even. Well, I mean, shit. again, Rockford. Baby. Exactly. You're hardened. This is, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's no, it's uncomfortable it's to hear like the it's scream, it's certainly, but it's taken so long. This turns around real quick, and she takes over. Well, she takes it seems like he doesn't want to resort to violence. No, he doesn't. No, he, he has no desire. Because that's also, a lot more charges. I, feel like I also might feel know like her. I'm pretty sure the gun probably was fake. It's probably a PB gun. It like may have been. Gun or but yeah, dude, you don't. But you don't take that chance. But yeah, because as soon as she grabs it, she like even kind of looks at it and then just beats him with it, which you'll see here in a second. Yeah, I mean, power to this girl, dude. That is incredible. That is a boss ass bitch right there. She's not having it, dude. She's not having it. Go donate to her. For minimum wage, I wouldn't be either. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So just just give me my gun back. So that was the East State uh, subway. Yeah, right next to the Circle K there. So right right across the street from. Once again, uh, I I don't know her name, but I mean, power to that girl. That's that's incredible. And I feel bad. I was so upset when I saw the article where it's like, oh yeah, she got uh, suspended. She got suspended. I'm like, why? She defended herself, and her shit was the only thing that was stolen. Unfortunately, I think it's against company code. That's fuck what you get that when you do it. Just yeah, because fuck it's, that. Just fuck because it's Listen, <laughs> I completely agree with you guys, but uh, unfortunately, get, not, the, it's your fault, Max. You made these yeah. rules. <laughs> no, the, uh, you. The, the subway, God like the, the, the the corporation of Subway, doesn't see what actually happened. They probably just see the paperwork that says she did this. And it's against so what she signed. Sense. It's against the thing she signed. What they so. think this Where guy's going to sue Subway? I can't pistol whip. So I never sign anything about. I can't pistol whip. <laughs> For sure, whip any job I go to, uh, I'm, I'm able to pistol whip anybody I want. <laughs> well, it's a faceless corporation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Subway, it's, does, it's Subway, a bunch Subway of paper. doesn't give a fuck about you. No. That's literally. What do you do, 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 Jerry? Like, do they even have like? I mean, they obviously must have CEO, but what's his name? I don't know. I don't know. And like you said, I mean, this is this is what's happening. There's a lot of like. It's not a local business. It's something where you literally don't know the person. They don't know the community. They don't know the people that work there, and they don't care. I'm gonna be honest though. Like, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say this, but based on like working at Subways, they're owned by someone who buys it. They are. Franchises. It's franchisee. Yeah, franchise. but it is a very like 110% run by how the boss wants to fucking run it. I've, oh, run, I've worked at two different ones and that's one was very corporate and one was literally, but we ran out of shit. Go buy it from Schnucks. And that's right, interesting. So wow. <laughs> this is definitely the boss being a dickhead yeah, and I mean, thinking sure. that, okay, I'm, I don't want to say it because I don't scoop. know, but I feel like. That girl probably Optics. knew the guy, and that's why the guy didn't do it. It kind of sounds that way, but I mean, and that's it's hard why to he's say. trying to take her purse too. Also, it does sound like that, but I mean, like duty war. Uh, what? And the it's, boss is probably well, like, this is like we don't know the whole story. All I know exactly. is, so, legit, no matter what the situation the is, the fault. fact that she, I mean, she had a gun in her hand, fake or not, you don't know that. It's so, the boss's fault. That's what I'm gonna do <laughs> at the end of the day. Not subway even necessarily. You guys want to take a quick break and then come back and finish yeah. this bitch off? Let's end it on me getting a suit. Yeah, let's make she be look stupid. All right, we'll be back. There goes our subway sponsorship. Uh, yeah. Hey, girl, why you so rigid? <clears throat> uh, girl, why you so rigid? 
I'm on the flow, we can get it. I ain't been around for a minute. Trying to get loose, don't fidget. Have a little hug when we finish. Gotta stay cool like a pigeon. I'm trying to win it. Your heart that is a mixtape, we could pop that in. When we at my crib, girl, you never end. Add it quick. But them hips got me babbling, and I'm packing it. Heat. Such a little treat, baby. It's the birds and the bees. If you want climb like a tree, then I'ma go and dive in the sea. Swear you gon' blow like a sneeze. If you please, back it on up. Trying to get right with that dance floor love set. If you please, back it on up. Trying to get right with that dance floor love set. Groovy, 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 groovy. It's so, 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 it's so. Groovy, groovy, groovy. Well, that was uh, Groovy by Kevin. Yeah. Very nice. It's a great song. goddamn song. It's an excellent song. Yeah, and a really I like the fun video, video, too. Yeah, it's super cool. Appreciate that, yeah. How, how was that? How'd that go? It was great. Uh, my friend Tiffany Mullins uh, made that for me. Shout out. Uh, just, yeah, super talented. Uh, English major. Uh, lives out in Chicago. Doing her thing. It's awesome. So great to have a friend to help me out with that. It's my first like ever music video I ever did. It was so, a super yeah, fun super video. Cool. I yeah. really yeah. enjoyed it. That's job. super cool. Yeah, cool. that's your oh, yeah. first. That's it looks like something that, like I mean, literally, like I wouldn't believe that you're a local artist. Like I would yeah. have just thought that I was just that. the well, whole thing. The know. production value is so good on that video. Yeah, she has a, a real good eye for um, uh, art and things like that. She's yeah, made that some really awesome things on way. YouTube. Like it's yeah, it's brilliant. Truly, some of the yeah, things dude. I've seen. But um, yeah, it's fun, dude. We'll that's a cool YouTube song. I like that's it. Okay with yeah. It. You know, no, we'll have everything <laughs> in all of the. Things. Yeah, that's, that's sure. Really cool. We got to spread this, dude, as far as we can, man. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun filming that. Felt good. And How long did it take with filming that? Oh, we did it in one day. One day, oh, really? Wow. So you hit Lots all those. Editing. You hit all yeah. those different spots in Rockford. Yeah, all in one day doing that whole shoot. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, some of it was at uh, Blackhawk Springs. Yep, nice. Uh, some of it was at Twin Sisters, and then some of it in my neighborhood. I want to keep it supernatural. Very smart. Yeah, it was yeah. really fun. Do what you know. You know, like that's gonna make you feel a lot more comfortable for sure. Yeah, and like uh, you know, it was fun getting little pieces of downtown as well. And um, I just uh, it was a really fun song, and I just super uh, super enjoyed it. You know. Yeah, dude, it was a whole lot of fun, man. It was fun to watch. And then obviously uh, another thing that we'll link in there is he has a. A video of them doing a, a live performance downtown at what is Rockford Art Deli's. It's uh, like right outside know? Art Deli, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, on the side of Rockford Art Deli, and they did like a print day. Yeah. So it was him and the Johns. It was it's awesome. Super the fun. Stuff, check it out. <laughs> Me and the Johns, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love the Johns. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. Like I said, working with them is so good. Like, as a musician, you need people to be able to bounce ideas. How did you get yeah. eventually? So, back in the day, um, an old friend of mine, Byron Emerson, Oh, I know Byron. He lived in the UK for a while. I was in a uh, Spanish class with him. Oh, cool. Well, now he's back in the UK, um, but, but he moved back in town for like a little over a year. And uh, mm -hmm. he knew some people at uh, District Barn Grill. Yep. And mm -hmm. they we started the State Line Sounds jam sessions together. So we would go and uh, like uh, once a month, it was an open jam, you know, and uh, people could come and play on stage or rap, sing, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. He would just play some covers and kind of just jam around. It was it was pretty fun. Nice. Um, so <clears throat> somebody I knew from, oh, God, it's been so long. I don't remember how I met this this guy, Liam. But he hooked me up with John. He told John about it. And John came and, and played. And uh, we just linked up back when I used to live in my apartment uh, down the way, Beacon Hill. Oh, yeah, dude. Shout out Beacon Hill. I lived there for a long time, dude. I was a guy that was used to steal the uh, ease. <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry, I was a bad kid. Uh -huh. yeah, I think uh, we're all bad kids at some point. Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to get really um 
if I sit and think about it, I'll be like, damn, like, I was such a little fucker. Like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Bad. like I would beg my parents for shit and, like, fucking, like... Yeah, real quick. What did we all cringe. do bad when we were kids? That's fun to talk about. <laughs> dude, I, you know all my stories. Let's remember, remember some. What'd you do bad, Kevin? Uh, oh, so many things. <laughs> so many things. Lots of like big lies and just really trying to do right. other shit. You know, that was like, my big thing too. Is dude. trying. I thought I was. I could outsmart the adults. Right. I was like, I can yeah. get away because I just I wanted to go out and do shit. other things. You know. Yeah. I did you know? some hoodlum shit, and uh, I lived in apartment complexes when I was like, you know, what? 10, he grew up in the Chicago land area. He grew Chicago. At least I didn't say it this time, but yeah. <laughs> They always rag on me for saying I'm from Chicago too you much. You do it all the goddamn time. I don't even do yeah, it that much. Us, it just makes they rap from Chicago. I'm just kidding. But, Polish sausage. Um, <laughs> so, deep dish pizza. No, I'm just kidding. Got beers. Cocaine. That too. That's, that's universal to Rockford and Chicago, though, yeah. you know? Hookers so, and cocaine. That's where we connect. But no. Um, so, I remember living in apartment complexes and being bad kids. You know, people would have like the... The rims on their cars, like the fake ones that were like, they oh, mean, the put them on caps, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We would just go and break them off. Oh, come no on. Oh, <laughs> like, what Jimmy. assholes, right? Like, dude, as a kid, I I'm never like, thought about the, like, like, I never thought I about that? the, the after effects. Like, I never thought yeah. about like what's going to happen to somebody that come out like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> to me, it was like, oh, this yeah, is hilarious. When we're kids, and now you see, you see the kids on TikTok doing that like beaning thing, and it's like, oh, beans, how hilarious they are. And it's like, it's kind of funny. Yeah, but like the people have to come out in the morning, they're like, fuck. No, that sucks. But the, just the idea of beaning is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, you've so seen stupid. all the cars with just the wheels exposed. Yeah. <laughs> There's no like hubcap. Yeah, dude, <laughs> it's it funny. Like, well, anyway, we, we did kind of cut you that, off. Yeah. Uh, we kind of cut you off in your introduction to how you met the Johns. I'm, I'm really excited. Oh, no, no. Uh, <clears throat> no, uh, yeah. I've been, the State Line Sons Jam Sessions were super fun. It was nice to jam with a bunch of random people. You know, like it wasn't, it wasn't like, <clears throat> something that I wanted to continue. It was a really fun thing. And I obviously I'm so grateful for it because of being able to meet, you know, both Johns and, uh, I just like making music with other people. And it's just so important to be able to like be around other people who have a really excellent taste in music and who are mm -hmm. just like able to share creative, um, advice, you know, and uh, value, to value that advice is really important. Like they have such a wonderful yeah. ear for music and they're so incredibly talented that I just, I, I feel so blessed to be able to make music with them. Absolutely. And unique, I think, unique I think connection. you know, as humble as you're being right now, I mean, just in the little bit of time that I've known you, I mean, this like what, an hour now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've noticed like you take the stuff very seriously. And that's, Appreciate that's something that I've, I've met a lot of musicians and like, you know, some of them are just like, oh, I'm just doing it, whatever, like having fun. And it's kind of whatever thing. Like you take this very seriously. And I, I, I think that's something that I haven't seen a lot. And I, I think that's going to take you a long way. I appreciate that. I do. I do take it seriously, but like I have a lot of fun doing it. Certainly. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And really, you can have fun passionate, doing something you're very serious as well. About it is really yeah. It shows. But it, it's Thank like, you. instead of just being like, oh, whatever, this is more comfortable. You're like, no, if I sit this way, I can, you know, sing better. And you do have an incredible singing voice, by the oh, way. We you. heard the, uh, the hip hop song, but like that singing thing you were doing, that's, that blew oh, me cool. away, dude. Yeah. I appreciate that. You know, and a big part is just like trying to love myself. You, you know, because I really do enjoy making music. Yeah. Music makes me feel amazing. Right. You know, so. As it should. Yeah, and it does. And like making music is such a spiritual feeling for me. And to be able to, you know, share that with other people or to even like talk with other people about music is very important. I love talking about music specifically. You Us know, too, man. Yeah, we yeah. all as far love other things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it means that much more to me because I'm very passionate about it. So Certainly. being able to talk about something like that for a long time is very special. And, but yeah, just making music is, is wonderful and being able to play with John's is fucking weird. I mean, awesome. I agree. I they're, mean, this they're is, they're both very talented. This talented. is our version of so you know, art. Obviously it's not you know music, but like we've gotten the chance to meet so many like musicians and other things and like people from all walks of whatever. I didn't, when we started this, we thought it was just going to be the four of us talking. But we've had so many guests on, and honestly, the guest episodes are so much better because we get to talk to people and like learn a lot of shit. I mean, we've yeah, learned. I, from, I literally prefer awesome. having a guest. I think not so that too. I don't and I mean, we've talking to you guys. We but. get to find out these people's influences. <laughs> we, you know, and of course, it's we we're not you know we're not professional interviewers. We ask you know the standard fare of questions, but it, I mean, I'm still interested to hear all this stuff, and we learn hey, from so better. many yeah. musicians <laughs> and various stuff. I'm, I feel very we grateful like that we got hand. this, and in the same oh, way, yeah. you know, I think I feel very grateful that we have this. I'm I'm enjoying learning from people. Yeah, it's wonderful, you know, being able to uh, relate to others and, and just like talk about stuff and learn something new, you know, some, something that like challenges you in a way. It's not like directly challenging you, but 
I think being around other people, specifically people you're not very familiar with, is a challenge within itself. Yeah, yeah. Right. absolutely. People are so interesting. Like, too. Right. That's the, Definitely. That's the crazy thing about it. Getting involved with different yeah. personality types and things exactly. like that are very interesting as I well. I love it. Like, it's Definitely. very nice in everyone's story. Everyone's got a totally different experience. I really like it, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for <laughs> all this, not to, you know, get all fucking sentimental on everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> Don't start <you> crying. <laughs> being, being, being grateful is a really powerful thing. It is. You no, know, we, I we, feel I feel it naturally. I want people to know like when I feel grateful and yeah, yeah. You know, even if like you it's don't like say something in a specific moment, but like um, you think about it and you feel it. I think it's just really important. People right. love knowing when you're thankful for something. Definitely. And I think you a know, lot of people definitely. need to express that more to people. Care. Like when, when someone does something for you, instead of just brushing it off, definitely let them know like, Hey, I appreciate the thing that you did there. You know, it's, it takes two seconds and it can make someone's day. It, it really can. It really can. Fucking look at us. We're I appreciate being you. Wholesome. 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 You're our most wholesome guest by far. Thanks. This is also probably the most wholesome episode. Pod- yeah, this is the one you show. This is cool. the one you should bring home you know, to mama. The thing is, I you mean, bring like, this one home to mama. Peace and love. Love the text. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm going to ruin it a little bit with some a couple of videos. Oh, uh, right. fuck <laughs> it. You know. Uh, we got to be apparently kind of offensive. Yeah, uh, we have Is certain fans. That, I don't know what I, I didn't need to bring it up now. But okay, I guess we're bringing them up now. This one's actually not that. Oh, offensive. speaking of fans, it just sucks. Yeah. I haven't watched any of bring these. Bring it up full so screen if you can, Max. It's a TikTok. I don't think I can. I think you can. You definitely can. I just don't know how. No. Nope. <laughs> what the, what <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh, no. Just dump all the ice tea. I think I it mean, was sweet it, tea. This yeah. ends wholesome. This ends wholesome. Damn, that sucks. You know he quit after this for sure. Oh, oh no. She gives him a hug. She gives him a hug. Right? Oh, she gives him a hug. I mean, they, poor they, guy. Guy. they needed it. That could happen to anybody. That you know? could have absolutely <laughs> happened to anybody. My favorite part is, look, she asks, so she goes to help him, and he's like, he refuses the help. He's like, I got this. And then... Dumps it all. Oh, oh no. no! He slipped. So in all fairness, that no floor was slippery. Stuck. Clearly, I don't. I'm not blaming that entirely oh. on him. He, yeah, that was a slippery floor. That was a slippery floor. At least he got a. I don't think he hit his chin on the way down. We'll get, we'll get you off the screen. So you're not self conscious. Hey, no, shit. I'm the only me, right? So I try to love myself when I can. Hell yeah, you know? Hey, and like you said earlier, you look fucking great. You look that is like, a pretty solid. You look great now, but you Thanks. look great. We are all too. sitting in energy. You, you said you I just like, that. You said you worked out the day before and you were looking hot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's it's hard to feel. I want to feel hot. You know, I want to, everybody should be able to like feel sexy, you know, in their body. But it's so difficult because mm-hmm. there are so many like things you compare yourself to all the time, especially oh, yeah. other oh, yeah. people. Like you just want to feel like attractive and 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 be pr- confident within yourself and. Stop like, like hoping subconsciously that other people find you attractive. Yeah. Because once yeah. once you find like a, a like a wholesome appreciation of who you are, mm-hmm. that that naturally makes you more attractive to other people. It really does. People, people are attracted to confidence. Confidence, confidence, confidence too. Like, and it's so a healthy far. confidence is very healthy. Absolutely. Not arrogance. Yeah. Well, I mean, confidence. the thing is, if you if you you know if you're not doing enough, if you you know if you're not taking care of yourself and that kind of stuff, and that's fine. And yeah. if that's what you want to do, that's your thing. But like, I think in in my experience, like I'm not. Obviously, super healthy, but we do yoga a couple times a week. You're, been there. you're, like, right like, you're making an I'm effort like, to do hold it. Hold the fuck on real quick. Before you make that comment, how much weight have you lost since you started actually like being a little more conscious of yourself? 35 pounds. Exactly. Dude, so that's what? fucking awesome. That's crazy. So, don't it, don't it demean yourself because no, no, you're I doing mean, awesome. No, no, no. I, I have no qualms with what I look like because I know I'm on the right path. I know I'm doing the right things for it. And I mean, how can you feel bad about yourself when you're moving in the right direction? I mean, you can't feel like... I'm not there. It's like, no, I'm there. We're just going to continue on this path. And you're doing, you're doing a lot of yoga, which is really good for your mind. It's helping you a lot. Just like we do a meditation session beforehand. And I mean, I really, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Genuinely puts you in a really good spot. My girlfriend, uh, has a yoga certification. Oh, really? Yeah, yoga teaching certification. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, my girlfriend, Sarah, she she opened my mind to yoga in a different way. You know, like I yeah. now have a much deeper understanding and I still don't know very much at all. No, me like, either, but... Yeah, but yoga is a very... A very wonderful thing, even if uh, just physically. Yeah, you know, but like we have books on it. That connection between we, your mind we, and your we sit body. and look at these books about like the you know the anatomy of it and whatever else, and find like the, you know the muscles and yeah, well that too. But <laughs> who knew the key uh, light was all instructing? <laughs> but uh, no, that was that was how we started. But we moved on from that. But no, we have these books now, and like it explains like there's little goofy things like for example when you like you know push out or whatever like sticking your tongue out, you would think it means nothing, but it genuinely does. Like affect the certain muscles in your face and things like that, and it, it has oh, yeah. Give as an goofy example, as it Max. looks. I'm not yeah. doing that. <laughs> it has to be like a you know, the proper muscle groups. Everything like works with each other. Exactly. Right. Constant yeah. Give and take. There's a reason for everything, and I, these books. I mean, they they write it out. You know, in pure straight, you can understand exactly why, and it makes it like 
like, why am I bending this way? It's like, oh, exactly, because of these things. And I mean, it really, like, when I leave yoga, I feel a hundred times better than I did when I showed up. I never really thought okay. about it, but you guys are turning me on to the idea of doing yoga. It oh, rules, I'm turning dude. you on? It rules. You, you <laughs> yoga that, is like, awesome. Yeah. I fully enjoy it. It's one of my favorite yeah, things yeah. to do. It's, I keep it's, saying I need to try it, but yeah, it's I sometimes hard to like do it. No, like, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like we all need to either hit up Sarah or we can all go. Best. Oh, Jess. 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 the yeah. best. Um, <laughs> you do a yoga stream. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. That's I was gonna say yeah, yoga. Yoga. Be a lot of fun. <laughs> yoga with the Screw City. It's Screw City. It's do locked in a hot room. Fuck. And when I so most often, more often than not, rather when I get high. Um, <laughs> when I, I get high, bro, <laughs> I, I, I want that as a sound bite. How bro, dare when you? I get high, so how high, dare so you? Nice song comes in. That sounds tight. You'll have to clip that for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we that would definitely are. Shit. I would love to. We're gonna sound bite that for sure. Awesome. So when I, when I get high, more often than not, I think about like holding a guitar in my hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think something that's very like sacred to me about playing an instrument is the feeling of control. Mm-hmm. Because when I think about playing the guitar, I imagine myself being able to manipulate the strings. Yeah. And they do my will. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, it's, and it sounds crazy. I don't want it to sound like a creepy thing. It's just no, really because you will. feel so yeah, often no, you, are out of, you are out of control. Yeah. So to be able to feel like you have control of something in like the, a world that's like so capricious and chaotic. Right. Is really, really awesome. So because you can do whatever you want with the instrument. Yeah. And it's so much yeah. more than just plucking strings. And like we were talking about, I mean, every even the fact that every single note on that guitar has been played at some point, you might come up with something that's never been played in that order before. That control thing goes deeper than just music. I never really thought about that. Maybe I'm just high, but that, that goes really <laughs> yeah. deep. Like just being good at anything, it gives a sense of control factor. You know, like gets you really like comfortable and being in control of something, like anything. Like I'm good or at It feels like an extension you feel, of yourself. Like, like it just feels oh, really yeah. like it feels that's really good to be good at something. And no, it yeah, sounds like really like you know. That's my thing when I sucking when yourself I, off. You know, yeah, but I, I, I don't, you have a fuck. very valid point. I don't. Yeah, so I like, don't smoke as much as you guys do, but I do have like a a drunk test. Is I'll like if there's an acoustic guitar, I'll pick it up and I will play "Wish You Were Here" by Pink Floyd. And if I can't play it, I am too drunk and you need like, to take my keys. Even being good at the game, anything. <laughs> but it's, it just ma- I don't know. Like you said, like I feel comfortable when I have a guitar in my hands when I'm in a certain state of mind. It just feels. It does feel right. Like you said, it does feel like you have control. Well, it's the okay. same thing I was gonna say. Like with yeah, what don't you have just said, that's like suck a guitar <laughs> until you get the humbling feeling where you run into someone who's eons better than you. Uh, no, I, I appreciate like, the fact I that someone's eons yeah, better. Very than humbling. Me. Yeah. Even like it, control even goes to something like the drums, right? Like yeah. when you're in control, you're not just in control of your instrument, you're in control of, of the tempo, mm-hmm. which so is like you're keeping rhythm, like, point, right? Yeah. So like that's even like a, a bigger sense of control. Like For being in the back, the drummer is the leader of the, the band. Shit. I mean, he's leading the song. There is an album um, by Tom Misch and Yusef Dates um, called, uh, what's it? Night Waves, Night Rider? Fuck. <laughs> it's Ooh. so good. And like Yusef Dates is an incredibly talented drummer. The his pockets are so fucking tight that you just can't help but be hypnotized when you're listening to it. And Tom Meach's voice is like butter, like a little bit of a UK accent in there, but like smooth and just classic vocal. Not cockney. Shit. And, and like <laughs> plays a beautiful count. guitar and his production is off off, off the yeah. chain. It's like, it's awesome. I'll have to check that out. And Tom Meach is great. Yeah, you all uh, accept dates. I appreciate. I mean, <laughs> like there's that. you know, there's days when I appreciate just like you know some nostalgia or something like that. But I do like to listen. I'm mostly hip hop, but I do appreciate listening to something that's like just so well produced and hearing people at the top of their craft that find each other and whatever. I really sit and appreciate and listen to that, you know, from end to end. Especially, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. weed. Weed helps. Yeah. <laughs> it really makes like when you find a super group and you're like these two bands I love, but together, yeah, it literally changes the whole thing. I, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Unless you're chicken foot. Don't. Yeah, yeah. So I know you did. Not uh, shade like that. I know you've done <laughs> live performances like at the Art Deli. Are there any other ones you've done? How many have you done? Yeah. Um. So before what was your COVID, favorite one too? Um, Minahan's. Oh um, yeah, I love yeah, Minahan. Yeah, Rockford, downtown Rockford. One um, of the greatest bars in Rockford. I know the real nice, down. real nice location. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, incredible really location. Relaxed ambiance, like mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. drinks, uh, good atmosphere, good people. Yeah, of course. Good hangs. I played there with uh, with uh, John Scott Daly, just a uh, couple guitars, did some singing, and uh, it was a really great turnout. Really packed that place, and it felt real, real good. And like, it's just a, 
nicely sized establishment too. Mm -hmm. So when there were a lot of people in there, it felt nice and tightly knit, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mm -hmm. like having a good amount of people there that are there for the same reason and are comfortable enjoying some music and having a drink. And it makes you feel more comfortable too when you're exposed to that. You're like, oh damn, like I kind of feel like I can get a little loose. It's such a comfortable. Yeah, yeah. All, these, all these cool people here. I, I went there and I like I knew maybe two people because that's who I went there to meet. And I mean, dude, I had a great night. I met everybody in the bar. We had an excellent time. That's, that's certainly one of the most slept on places in rockford have you had to play a show with like a less amount of people before and what's the difference between a show with a lot amount of people and a less well it was nice because during state line sounds <laughs> i was able to jam on the drums most of the time yeah you know we play with multiple people i like playing with the band i do feel more comfortable as so the first instrument i learned how to play was the drums yeah. you know because when i was younger i was like yeah i want to play guitar but i didn't have the discipline for it it's I just, so hard I, it takes forever i have friends that play for 10 plus years and like they still learn and get better to this day you know it's just an ongoing thing of course and you never stop learning you know um but then i learned how to play the drums and uh i like being at the front a lot more than i like being in the back yeah i love playing the drums but i feel like i have uh, a broader sense of performing when i'm singing and playing guitar yeah. or standing up, you know, and it feels really good. I love playing drums though. Um, it's a different like bracket of the music, I guess. I get it. Like I definitely yeah. understand that. Oh yeah. I get it, but in the rever reverse, cause I always wanted a drum kit growing up, but like my parents were not having that. So I got a guitar yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm never learning this shit. Oh no. I got so lucky. The band that we played in was, we were terrible. We were not a good band, but we did try. I mean, it's a high school thing and you're just having fun with your buddies. But my, my buddy's dad, uh, was he had this giant computer set up in his basement. That's where he worked. And he worked at home and he was there all the time. He would let us in the room next door with stacked up bass amps and guitar amps. You know, we're talking like 200 watt guitar amps. Damn. We're just jamming in this room and he's just sitting over there just tapping his feet along. I'm like, there's no way you're enjoying this, but he just let us do it. And I mean, it's it's hard to find parents that are cool with that yeah. kind of shit. But dude, when they're supportive like that, I mean, we really got like, Again, we didn't write anything good, but I mean, we had so much fun and created like you bonds. did it. It's all that matters. That's all yeah. it is. We did it, and it was so much fun. I do miss it. I miss playing with a band. It's just a nice release. Just go for it, you know. Yeah, I think start I think a band guys. <laughs> okay. good start it's band. so Who's hard it? to connect with people on a musical level, though. So that's like I'm really happy for you that you have like the Johns that you feel like. You're I have a few people. Johns, in Rock I love Rockford. that. Yeah. Now, now I'm now it's starting to sound really really cool. To me. It does sound yeah. awesome. Yeah. Johns like refer to them like, like, like the Seventh Street Johns. They're so cool. It's like. That is that's honestly like that you're the Johns. Johns. They they were joking. The band should be Kevin and the Machine. <laughs> Kevin like and the Johns. Yeah. Kevin and the Johns. It sounds, you know, like it's I don't know, but it, I love it. Man, music's that shit. Oh, my soul. Look yeah, at me. Oh, I'm gonna make too much noise. Like, like, the fuckers fiddling with shit now. Though. That was my problem with being in a band. It's like five people, and it's so hard to get. It is four, everyone on the same track. The same yeah. track. It is really hard. Same to level of dedication. But, but the thing is, like, like you said, the, the key is then if you're having trouble with it, then you didn't find the right people. That's right. true. And right. then when you do, like he did, it's like it's something really beautiful. And like I get why, like, struck the gold. Like, guitar honestly, make you cry. And if, like, if there's a place to strike gold, special connection. If there's a place to strike gold and finding musical thing, it's a rock. There's so many times that I go out somewhere and I just sit and talk to somebody about hip hop or you know R and B or whatever, like for the whole night and it's just some random dude I've never met in yeah. downtown Rockford sitting at like CJ's or something like that. I'll just have a conversation with them the whole night or somebody I do know, we run into each other and it's immediately just a music conversation. Right Again, now. it's because we're all sad. We got very low. Yeah, so we I don't like think, well, we we've like all, the music. We've all been sad. Of the year, I mean, so. as, again, as a former addict, I mean like every day that I'm not high is like a much easier day. I thought so you were going to say a bunch of Saturday. I'm like, Max, no, no, but I, I mean, like because that. of that, like when, when you're in that, when you're in that mode, you're coming down off of something or you're you withdrawing that? or something like that. It does make you really appreciate the music a lot more. So I did listen to a lot of music in that state. I mean, I think that had a lot, a yeah. big effect on me. Thank you, Max. I won't play the sound bite of thanks a lot, Max. That's nice. I think what's important sometimes, like when you get high, maybe it like helps you like listen deeper. We you did know, for really sure. Does. Yeah, some people They're like really some people does. tell me like I can't hear music like that or something like that. Well, the trick is like weed. You know, I'm fine but, with, but the trick is like I I got into a bunch of bad stuff for like you know everything under the sun. And like I said, like I think that I don't regret those decisions because while it was a hard thing and it set me back, certainly I did get to experience that. And like I said, it makes life a lot easier when you've dealt with that kind of hardship. Every morning waking up and just going, I need to get the sick off of this. I feel terrible. I have to figure out how I'm going to get high, and it's. It's a rough thing. Weed, pff, that's no problem. I guess we'll yeah, get every day. We're fine. Like, it's not even an issue. It's not even, even, even alcohol I'm fine with, but like getting off of the hard stuff really changed my life. But being in it, like I said, when you have those, like 
it's a roller coaster of emotion. So like every day I'm kind of on a straight and narrow or, you know, it, yeah. it varies a little bit, but when you're high, it's like, holy shit, I feel great to, oh my God, this I is the worst ever. Awful. High, so you, high get, that, lows so you get to experience yes. different kind of things in that range mm-hmm. of emotion. When you're high, it's like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard to like low, like, oh my God, this song is the best thing I've ever heard because I'm in the low point. Yeah. So I think I got like a much wider thing from that. So again, I don't regret what I did. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> but like, I don't regret it, but also I, you know, I'm glad I'm clean. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Cleanish. And also in another beer. perspective, yeah, I think treated responsibly like in the like with the use of like some psychedelics like for instance uh DMT. I really, I've had some of the best like mu- like experiences listening to music while like on DMT with my eyes would. closed just focusing nice. on the music. I have yet to I have yet to listen to music while on DMT. Oh, uh, it's it's That's, great. Have you tried DMT? Or the Once, once podcast before. Podcast. <laughs> once before. I don't know. Oh, I look at me throw myself Jerry. out there. I'm really, I'm really out there, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry for you. It's it's pretty well, cut that we can, but no, um yeah, we did it once before. Even yeah, like on mushrooms nice. or something. Like when when I was when I did DMT, I was in the back my backyard. I, I went outside and I uh, had a, s- several friends there, and we're all just chilling in the patio. A little overcast day, and uh, I put point oh three. Well, I put weed in the bong, then I put point oh three of the DMT, then I put um, greens on top of that. So, yep. man, nah. yeah, I hit it, right. I hit it on my bong. Her name was no, Zelda. Direct flame, nice. <laughs> Fucking, uh, I remember the days of changing my pieces. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah exactly. We're gonna hit the princess <laughs> today. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, nice. yours is Try four. So, no, no. the one with the green elf. Yeah, right. Oh, no, yeah, right? I'm kidding. Like, is that Zelda? <laughs> like, nah. Fucking, uh, <laughs> it hits you like a truck. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? it comes and, on fast. And I've, I've done psych- many psychedelics before, you know, and have wonderful experience off of like, same, you know, mushrooms and LSD. Mm hmm. But I, I got a little anxious when it hit me first. I was like, oh, shit. And like, that's it happens that's so real bad. stuff. It's There's yeah. an alleviating feeling that comes immediately after that where like it's like something almost yeah. like out of body that assures you like everything's going to be you're okay. okay. Definitely. Exactly. You're you okay. Have to you're, you know, I was yeah. like, you know what, Kevin, uh, you've taken psychedelics before. Just enjoy it. You know, yeah. fine. Right. And I asked uh, an old buddy of mine. I was like, hey, man, you got me. He's like, oh, you're good, Kev. Like, and it felt like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm good. You know, mm. I let back. And I, said. I felt like I was floating outside of my body like i felt like in doctor strange when his astral form is pushed out of his yep. body I you know see like that. I see that's that. how it that's how it felt and i felt like i could see my spinal cord and like each vertebrae and i and i could like control it and really manipulate it to do whatever i wanted it to do i felt like i had yeah. total control of my spine and then when i closed my eyes I could see like the outline of a chimpanzee's face, like the apricot colored skin. Oh, we really are the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could see it like studded in, in like red diamonds. Huh, that's cool. It was, it was wild. And then when I opened my eyes, my open eye visuals were like the cracks in the patio were mm-hmm. sprouting these yes. like bright green plants super quickly, like almost like a, like a, a time lapse. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And the same thing was happening to the sky, like in a documentary where you see clouds going super fast like that's what i saw but i also felt like i was frozen in time so i'm i feel feel like i'm just floating but then all of a sudden it's you know i'm right even back but then when the clouds moved away from the sun and the sun hit my my back Mm -hmm. it felt like my entire body was covered in like this warmth like it like it shot from my head to my toe i I got up and i screamed like and like a like a wonderful scream like i just had to let a some kind of guy. energy out i was like ah, like, <laughs> your friend's like you're good so fucking good yeah it was it was awesome it's powerful man i mean i think some of the great the things that have taught me the most and like you know helped me through hard times and stuff like that have been psychedelics i mean the various yeah, it, different things a, of, it really does have a connection great learning with depression experiences. and everything too well, I and I, I, I i it really does <clears throat> i kind of on it i kind of akin um dmt versus like lsd or mushrooms to like edibles versus like dabs like when you take a dab, like it's like, okay, you're hitting it really quick. And like, if you're the kind of person that gets anxious, like I do when I smoke a ton of weed, you get anxious really fast and whatever else, but it happens really easy. Whereas edibles, it's kind of like reminds you every so often, like, Hey buddy, you're going to get high real quick. And I'm like, all right. It's like, how are you going to get high? Just, just so you know, that's going to happen. <laughs> and it's the same thing with LSD and it kind of yeah. eases you into it. The DMT was in moderation or like, I feel like I think there's some good. of the greatest things that you can do. Yeah. They're so yeah. powerful. Yeah. And I it wish makes, it wasn't considered like almost a hard drug. I feel like it's, right. like I, I hate to admit that like, yeah, I've, I've dropped acid. The way that I describe acid, you know when I mean? people yeah. ask or whatever, like, and, and like they ask how it, it is, I'm like, way, just imagine like having like, do you know how much easier, <laughs> yeah, to ma- imagine how much easier the day after is because literally like, you know where walls are. You know how to walk. You yeah, know how to yeah. breathe. There's no the next day, over. You get well, that's what I'm saying. Stupids, maybe a little bit. The thing that I always say after brain. the day after yeah. psychedelics, I always say I hear the brain. I hear the silence because there's always some noise in the background. And the day after psychedelics, it's all gone and it's yeah. silent because you just dealt with the most chaotic 
you know, nothing makes and now, sense. This is in moderation. Don't go. Absolutely. Of course. And yeah, I'm not saying do this, but I know my friends have done that and they've really like <clears throat> messed themselves up. Well, if you're, shit, if you're you know? prone to um, psychosis, I mean, it can certainly exactly. push you into it's, that. But yeah. It's something for, that you do in moderation. For me, for everybody, it's different. It's but for me, I think it really has helped me. It, it um, I, I've cried a lot on psychedelics. I, one time I took a bunch of mushrooms at my current apartment and all I did was I wrote the word care. 132 times in my phone. You care. Yeah. I just Max wrote cares. the word care over Max, and over yeah, and I don't know like, I don't know why I did it, but I just did it and I cried. And it was one of the greatest experiences I've had. Yeah, like I remember in high school like the first time I tried acid or my parents or anyone who's watching this are going to be like fuck goddamn I hate that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, um yeah, druggy. You know, but no, um it like really cured my depression for a it while. Did. Like I mean, it came I back. Have, uh, I'm, me wrong, I'm but, not going to say know, which friend, but I do have a friend who actually years. just uh, just contacted like, me recently. A very very close friend who just contacted me recently, saying th this was a person who has never really been interested in it. Um, have done it in the past, but have never really enjoyed do. it and whatever. And they're saying like, hey, look, I've heard this is good for depression. I'm like, well, in the right setting, it can be. If you'd it like really to do can. that. I would be happy to, you know, come along with you on that journey. So hopefully that'll happen dude, soon. Yeah, it, it's really good yeah. for people. I swear, like it for a good a couple good of years. Good for some people. It's, yes, it's exactly. one of those. Things. I think Not we need all, to. But if you stop. have an addictive personality and you're going to be like, you know, just you can't get. Doing a, that, I don't think you're ever going to get addicted to that. Not I don't think there's anybody that's going to get addicted. There's a addiction. There's a mental addiction of just craving to want to do something over and over because it's fun. I guess, but I don't know that I would want to. Literally, like the reason that the thing that keeps me going, like I've had, you know, well, allegedly. I've had the ability to do this for a long time. And I mean, just the fact that I'm like, okay, I need the time and I need to be in the right mindset. I need to have, you know, a basically a mental list of things that I want to work on and deal with when I'm under that. You yeah. Know, you need spell. to go in with a grocery list of shit you want when to work I, well, on. Just when I'm under the spell, I want to be able to kind of work on myself and kind of look inside and stuff. And when I'm ready to do it, that's when the time will happen. Yeah. I just kind of let it, I just let it happen. It finds you when you're ready for it. That's kind of what it is. But I mean, the, my friend that wants to go on this journey, I think it's a good thing. And I want to take them along with that. Hopefully help them out. Yeah, uh, well, they've done it before, so they're not going to go into psychosis. I think it's a yeah, good thing. Yeah. It did wonders for me. Start with a light dose. Clearly don't give them like, and I mean, someone like him, uh, we have, you know, a creative. I think that's a big thing. I, I myself am not the most creative person. I try to be, and you're I have everybody you're a lot more creative than you think. You are. Everybody has some of it in them, but I mean, legitimately, like I've, you know, when I draw, I kind of just freehand and whatever else. But when I've done psychedelics, I have some like framed stuff in my house that I, I really truly the enjoy looking at every day. And it was just, it was just great. something that I just did on a whim. And I, also, as you were talking about, like in bringing other people in and sharing the enjoyment. Um, when we were all doing it together, we were in a house and I was drawing this thing and I called them in. I said, Hey, everybody add something to this. And we kind of all added to this picture huh, that we just drew on a piece of scrap, you know, basically like a brown grocery bag and whatever, but it's one of my most cherished things that I have in my home. And it's something that all of us shared and we had a great experience with it. You know, you never know what's going to do it, man. But yeah, that's nice. It's nice. That I can help a lot of people too. Like, mm -hmm. there, I mean, like, you know, there are, there are books about how psychedelics can uh, help those who have, um, suffer from PTSD or like, you know, chronic yes. depression and things like that. It's really, mm -hmm. it's really awesome. There's a book called the acid, uh, the acid test. I, yep. I actually I have that book on the, audio. The name of the author. It. Yeah. But it. it's, uh, like you, the use of MDMA, um, LSD and, uh, oh, ketamine, yeah, like, uh, I think ketamine, yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, is, uh, th uh, y using those drugs to, um, aid people with yeah. uh, different kinds of ailments and, you know, you know, getting them into a state where you're more receptive is what it is. Because some of these people, when they have PTSD, they don't want to hear certain things. They It takes them to that point and their kind of mm -hmm. mind locks them off. Where these drugs kind of open those doors and allow them to be more receptive to the therapy that they're receiving. And I think it's a huge thing that we need to do a lot more study on, obviously. We really do. That's the problem with yeah. it is that it, there's not, not enough much studies. studies on it. Same well, they're working, on, they're working on that. I've heard some very good things. Yeah. I follow some forums. Yeah, and yeah stuff, stuff, whatever. Yeah. Making a lot of progress. Should I add that to my Audible? <laughs> yeah, it's a really good book, too. I don't know. I've just been enjoying Pimp. Oh, dude, so Pimp good. by Iceberg Slim, excellent, oh, excellent God, novel. Such a good fucking. Book. It's dude for for what it is. I mean, obviously, like it already happened. Reading it doesn't make it happen again. Yeah, but I mean, getting to listen and experience someone's life that was like obviously very fringe, dude. It's an excellent book, yeah. I, and, and it's free, free on he, Audible. He, it's so. free on Audible, and he lived in Rockford for he did, a long yeah, uh, period uh, of time. Iceberg Slim okay, lived so in Rockford. It's but, Rockford esque. You got it. That's a, that's a Screw City, it's book pick. Yeah. <laughs> no, City, baby. Screw City Book Club. <laughs> Screw City Book Club. Screw City, Screw City Book Club. Book Club. What's up? Well, that's speaking Iceberg of Screw City, very his doable. next video is pretty Rockford in spirit. Okay. You'll see it. Let's see what we got. Uh, it's not in Rockford, but it, it feels It can't like be it. as good as the one I showed last episode. When shoplifters take all the Nike... Like oh, I've seen this. Yeah, this door. was actually very akin <laughs> to the one that you showed last week, I think. 
where it was like, God damn, I love rapper. Uh, but that girl was, yes. you thief every time you're in here. And they just they left her. Oh, she just no. dropped all of it. Oh, no. Is that security? <laughs> yeah, it's security no, it's about cop. to tackle her. I think her. it's a cop. Yeah, she oh, got arrested. Shit. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Your, <laughs> your getaway driver just they booked locked it. it. Someone got in the passenger seat, but they didn't let her in. So that feels like it was a setup. But I mean, it's possible. They a fall guy. A lot of those gal. things uh, that oh. you're seeing online, I mean, I've noticed this a lot more lately of these like things that are like, they look like oh my god what an incredible thing and it's obviously set up but you have to like mm-hmm. dig deep to find it i've also found like um I, I call it the riffraff effect but there's a lot <laughs> of like people like labels that are signing legitimately obviously bad artists you know and that's subjective but like artists that are like almost seem like they're kidding in order yeah. to put them out because they know it'll get views and it'll end up on podcasts and stuff like that and honestly if you're like again, it's music that does invoke some sort of emotion, even if that emotion is comedy. So, like you know, it's, it's, comedy it's, and it's entertaining. <laughs> I mean, technically, laugh, like humor. laughter, yeah, humor. I'm I'm not really good at words. I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask, uh, what are you writing in your journal? There, Ian, is that uh, information that's, that could be shared? That's his diary. Or is it, or is that, oh, yeah, diary. Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't know. I, I didn't know if it's it's, it's all for his therapist. Later. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, I had a note on here. Uh, R.I.P. Norm Macdonald. We didn't talk mm-hmm. about that yet. We haven't. Oh talked. no way. We lost yeah. a legend. Yeah, we lost Norm Macdonald. By the time this comes out, that'll be like old news. Yeah. So you like said Norm Macdonald. Yeah. 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 Norm he was uh, fighting a, a battle with right cancer, and he didn't mention it to anybody. He just kept it private. What a he, he did the Bowie thing. Yeah, Bowie what did a, the same thing. Wonderful personality and yeah. like such a wonderful comedian. Yeah, and like actor, like definitely unique. I mean, the yeah. deadpan delivery His that he had on everything, style. and also he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't listen to anyone when they told him something not to do. They were specifically said. Uh, I think uh, one of the higher ups at NBC was like a giant fan of either OJ Simpson or like whatever. Yeah. And they, and fi- he, they fired him because he just made jokes anyway. Told him like, that I'm not listening. Fi- when they fired him, they told him he wasn't funny. And then later they brought him back. They said like, they brought him back yeah. and he wouldn't listen to them when they told him not to say something. I mean, he respected comedy as an art and he was like, I'm not going to be told what I he can't literally say. Should. He just didn't give a shit. Yeah. He, he was like, you know, no, no he did say he, one. You're wrong there. He did give a shit about the art of comedy. Well, yeah, but that, true. Yeah. Right, but he gave <laughs> no fucks in regards right. to. Well, well, what you're saying, like he doesn't care about like what the cor- exactly cor- corporations yeah. were thinking and shit. Like that. he only you gave know, a like, shit about comedy care, like, as a as a right. as a whole as a you know there, it's a community and I love I love that we have so many podcasts and radio shows and stuff like that now with common comedians. It really like, shows how knit they are and like, it, they're dude, explaining yeah. their actual life. They yeah. talk to each other and you hear yeah. this organic conversation that would normally take place in, in the back of a comedy club that no one would hear, mm-hmm. but now you're getting to hear these conversations and stuff like that and see how this. I mean, some of these people, you know, obviously they're unique personalities to yeah. do that. And it's very interesting to hear the things that they have to say. I really appreciate yeah. Like, I love comedy podcasts. Me too. Just mm-hmm. hearing comedians talk with each other. Everybody says on like certain podcasts, oh, I hate when the comedians are on. Like, um, Why would uh, you? What? Well, no, what like Whiskey Ginger that? and stuff like that. They're like, oh, I don't like when the comedians are on it on the forum. I'm like, Shut no, I, I disagree. I love to hear him in his element talking with one of his peers about the things that yeah. they enjoy. Like, it's. It's such a more organic conversation. It's Pure not an vamp. interview. Speaking of, I love your shirt. Thanks, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a- and speaking of, Tom, dude, you know, a lot of TikToks that we've shown first, he shows on his podcast. I've noticed afterwards. that. Well, actually, yeah. one of the podcasts I was listening we to showed, showed the, uh, the subway first, getting broken into. <laughs> so that and was fun. I am honored. I mean, and we didn't see it through us, but that shows that we're doing something right. If we're playing videos that Tom later goes on and sees and plays them too. There we go. At least we're, inspiration. we're on the same track. So, yeah, if my inspiration, if my idol is playing my videos that I found, because they're mine, you know, I found them. You found no, them. So you <laughs> right. But no, it's well, literally for I'll check the about. dates. I'll show it. But no, Whatever we do have a uh, we do have a couple of drugs. Yeah, <laughs> drugs. we actually don't yeah. have them that. No week. drug. I don't know why no. you played that? I mean, <laughs> no. What drug is it this week? Wow. I mean, there is if you want to go into the thing, but I don't know if it was appropriate for this episode. I just want to drop a few. I mean, do we uh, want to finish legs. it off with a fucking? Do we have? Drug? What, do we have you, any? Gym? Go to the what drug is it channel? There's some what drug. Oh, this will be fun. I, I do know. love this game. <laughs> this I'm is one sorry, of my favorite Kevin. games. <laughs> Okay, so we have, we'll just do this one quick and then we'll probably end it on this. But so the game is that obviously, like I said, I used to be an addict. I was into hard drugs. I did everything under the sun in various stages. So as a result, seeing what other people are on, I'm usually pretty good at picking up on it. So I decided not to do this segment today, but Max was like, I'm doing it. As soon as he came to the door, I made him take it back. You motherfuckers. He's in a lawnmower. <laughs> uh, he's in their lawn. 
I <laughs> mind you, the seat's like almost falling off when he's rocking back. I'm not even sure that's a drug. Like, this is, is that a booze. chihuahua? That's just yeah, alcohol. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I don't I'm know. trying what to is, figure what is he's this He's mad out. at the police and he's about to chase them down on his lawnmower. I don't even know if that's so <laughs> much like drugs, if it's just poor education. I think, I think it's poor education and alcohol is uh, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> little chihuahua. That feels a lot like alcohol. Chihuahua right. in his, that was a quick one. There's one more. We'll hit the second one and then we'll end this up. And it off in a green note. You gave your dad some water. Bro, watch this. You want to fight? Oh, look at that. Are you taping me? I love the tape. Yikes. Again, I'm, again, I'm not she sure that this me. is drugs because my stepmom does this and she's. Oh, no, that's for sure. She's on some kind of upper. <laughs> yeah. Your dog any water? Oh, yeah, she's on an upper. She's on like some. <laughs> Mind you, this is just on my TikTok feed. I'm just scrolling TikTok, and this is the stuff I find. Legitimately, that does just feel like like alcohol and maybe like some sort of mild up or like an Adderall or something. She might be interested in something it's like that. Too or, much wine. Whatever, but it does feel a lot more alcoholy than it does uppery. But she was asking for water, which is usually a good indication that she's on some sort of upper. No, she was asking. She was telling him to give his dogs water. But he said, I don't own dogs, and they're not his dogs. Oh, so she, 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 dogs. Right. she said, hey, did you give your dog some water? Oh, okay. And I just heard her asking for water. And she's so. chasing him down because he won't give his dogs water. That that's very cl- that might just be alcohol. My stepmom literally does this shit where like I've taste, <laughs> I've recorded her and she's like I like being recorded. Like, that's, I hope your that literally sounds like my stepmom. Watch this. She doesn't. She's also okay, she good. rules. Shout out Jeannie. <laughs> Shout out. Can we just like take this video and just put strawberry wine? over I just well I want to put strawberry wine over my entire life. Well, I'm sorry that's to subject rules. you to my awful TikTok feed. Yeah, your TikTok feed sucks ass. It didn't feel appropriate for this episode any no, longer. How, at how least how I it? actually saw some Rockford shit on my TikTok feed. So that was pretty cool. Honestly, I, I think this has been an excellent podcast. I'm, I'm really glad to have gotten a chance to interview. Man. It was it was great to meet you as well. I can't wait to come yeah, see some of your nice. shows. Yeah, appreciate you guys that. are going to be playing, uh, you know, in the near future here in Rockford. Uh, we haven't really put anything together yet. We're really just trying to sit down and get a few demos recorded, and perhaps we'll even like make the demos yeah. kind of tight and, and release them to listen to. That'd be awesome. Before we release like the mixed. And that mastered version. That'd be Happy great, to for you. I, I would awesome. love to hear more, man. I got some solo stuff coming here pretty soon too. I'm really trying to like just appreciate the music I make and just enjoy it. Yeah. And not think about it so much. I'm just trying to make music, and there are people that like my music, so I'm like, why wouldn't I make some? We more? certainly enjoy you it. Know what I'm saying right. we, so like, go we for it. really yeah. enjoy it, dude. I mean, listening yeah. to the little bit that we have available on YouTube, I mean, I I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank I was you. blown away. I'm like, you got this guy? <laughs> <laughs> why is he coming here? <laughs> I should have brought the sample. I think I, uh, I think somewhere I have a sample of the song on my phone. Maybe I don't, or like email maybe of the new song. We just a really rough recording of the first song we're uh, we, making a demo for. I was gonna I'm say we'll, really we'll put it in post it. if you find it cool. We can add I don't know if he wants his demo on post, post, but I'd love to promote the yeah. other stuff. Well, anyway, oh, yeah. I'm I'm really excited we got to have you here, man. This has been Thank an you. awesome podcast. Yeah. But it's super fun. Or anybody you want to shout out? Absolutely, well, man. The, the floor is yours. Yeah. The floor is yours. Is there anything you want to say? Shout out! Uh, shout out to all the people I love for the one time. Shout out to Screw City Podcast members for Thank bringing you. me Thank on. Thank you. We're happy Cheers. to have you. Um, I'm just happy to be alive. I want to feel good and spread some love and good energy. You're doing. Have it. some fun shit. Do some fun shit and then have some fun shit. Have some fun shits and do some cool shit. How about that? Couldn't agree just, more, man. Literally, don't be a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you gotta fucking do. Uh, simple just, as that. Don't just, be a piece just of shit. Love, right. Just love others. Just be cool. Remember that the of pit course. vipers stay on during Pit time. vipers stay on always. <laughs> always. Shout, out, always. shout, always. shout out, out to the Johns as well. Oh, yeah. you know. uh, find me on Instagram at Kevin Matra underscore. My last name is Matra, M E T R A S. The S is silent. So you don't we'll have French. all this in the description. Yeah, I did not know that. I'm sorry. I've been saying Matra this whole time. <laughs> oh, did you even say my full name? Yeah. <laughs> no, we just said Kevin I, because we weren't sure. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. There you go, Kevin Matra. Yeah. Well, Matras, I, don't, I never Matras. know if the S is Matras. silent, but now we know. There we go. That makes it like I mean, 10 times cooler, dude. <laughs> yeah, <it's> 10 <laughs> times cooler. Um, that rolls off the tongue. Really I have a letter nice. in my name that so I don't even use. <laughs> yeah, it's French. You're fr- so you're French and you got the mustache. A little bit. I'm mainly. Uh, Sicilian. Oh, okay. Huh, okay. And I have some French on my dad's side. We, oui. dude. I'm just a uh, oui. various. <laughs> that made you ten stuff. times oui, cooler. Yes. Oh. I'm actually a little bit of French too on my dad's oh, side. So see. you're also Armenian, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a server, Armenian. right? Armenian. I'm Persian. He's okay. Persian. So I'm the server that walks up to the table with the curly mustache. You know, <laughs> yeah. Find any restaurant. Dude, go find him at Joseph. I think, I think if about he's that. a, I think server. You. Tip him very well. Oh, find me on Twitter at um, no soy please underscore. 
Um, but I do I eat soy. It. I just I, I, don't know. I, just, I, I was like, no it. soy, please. And again, but we'll I, have I all these links soy. in the in the description. We'll have them all in the uh, you know the bio and stuff like that for the various things. But Click the really, really happy to have you on, Kevin. Right on, this was right awesome. Yeah, Thank awesome. you so much. Anytime, yeah, man. I hope to come back. Yeah, Cheers, be awesome. Everyone. Absolutely. Cheers. We'll see you next week. Drink. All right. Cheers. See you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers.